Welcome to our last class all together. I will meet with everyone individually or in small groups after this, but this is probably the last time we're all here at the same time, which is kind of sad. We're going to do more review. Um, apologize again for blanking. I forgot to send out earlier a practice final to do today, but I just did that. Look in your email. But I realized that there was an important thing we skipped over to save as review for this week that we actually need to do. So in the personal finance decisions, in the how to save area, then there's the three sisters problem, where there's three sisters that save for retirement in different ways, and how does it work out for them? So this is a great review of compound interest and the increasing sum of annuity due formula. If that would help you, then I'll go to a breakout room soon and record myself doing that. And if you want to join me and see that, you can. Otherwise, it's okay. You can just do a practice final yourself or with a study group and always watch the recording later. But this is incredibly practical about what is useful in real life for trying to save for retirement and getting enough money. So I don't want to end our term without having done this um, where you can see it either live or recorded. So I've set that up on today's Google Jamboard uh, for the first few pages. So if you want, then come be part of that. The other announcement is just a reminder and I'm gonna actually pick a blank spot on the Jamboard um, I will send this out in writing also, but if you didn't hear things before, then um, for the real final exam, what it will look like is you are going to tell me you're ready. This could be as soon as today or as late as Wednesday of finals week, if you're really cutting it close. I will send you a final without the answer key and keep the answer key for myself. And then you're going to send me your work. So here is one of the Math 25 finals when I taught last term, different class, but same routine. So this person sent me their images. I use my nice computer stylus to write on them. And just like I was handing you your work back, I will send you a copy of your papers with all the comments on it. And then we will get together and do a short meeting, maybe just you and me, or maybe you have some friends and want to do this sort of as a study group and it will have an oral exam. I'll say things like, you did great on the review problem 10. Can you tell me why you made those decisions? Or you made a careless error here. Can you tell me what you did wrong? Can you fix your mistake? Or maybe I will give you a picture like this from someone else's test and say they missed up right here. Can you find where they made a careless mistake? It might not be your paper and so on. And this way we all know that you can do the work. You're not just looking things up online and no one has to worry that people in the future will say, oh, you know, winter term 2021, can't trust those grades. They're all meaningless, but they can say, no, you, you've really done your work. We've double checked on you, things are good. Um, so those two announcements, stick around with me in the breakout room I go to if you want to see the three sisters problem, review some finance formulas that way, and let me know when you're ready for the real fine. The only other thing I have to say was I spent a long time yesterday sending everyone an email and letting you know how you're doing in the class how much you needed to do to um, be done with work. And that was such a pleasure. Thank you for all of your work this term. That meant that most of those emails were, you're close to an A. Here are a few more things to do to make your A solid. So thank you again for being good students in a term that is in some ways slightly awkward. Any other questions from you before I move to a breakout room for the three sisters problem and you either follow me or work on a practice. Has everyone found where the jam boards for this week are? 
in this green area. I probably should have made a fold out for week 10 so it's consistent. But thank you for people that have put something in the Moodle forum. And that's all for now. Okay, I'm gonna pause the recording. And so the three sisters problem is a famous problem about retirement finance math. You have three different sisters. I've named them Cindy, Clara, and Chloe. And they, for some reason, all have 3,000 per year by the time they're age 25. So this is slightly unrealistic because most people start small and can save more as they get older and their careers mature. But we're just assuming that they always are saving 3,000 a year. Cindy, for 10 years, from her age 25 to 34, is putting it all in savings. And then she stops saving and goes on vacations. Clara does the opposite. When she is younger, she spends it all on vacations. And when she's older, she saves it. And then Chloe is always the same half and half. She'll always put half of it into savings and half into vacation. And we're wondering how will they do? Are they ready for retirement by the time they're 64? Questions about the setup before we keep going. No, okay. They also all have a retirement account that earns 8% interest. And for now, we're going to assume 400,000 is their target for retirement. We'll talk about why at the end. So Cindy first. So part A, when she is saving 3,000 each year for 10 different years, which formula are we going to use? No one's going to help me. The simple interest? It's the repeated putting money in, repeated deposits. Annual increasing annuity? Yeah, the annual increasing annuity formula. So. So her deposit is 3,000. Her rate is 8%. The nice thing about this formula is everything is always per year automatically. We don't have to do any of this times 12 divided by 12 stuff. And the number of years, this is 10 years of her doing this. So we plug everything in. Three thousand times one point oh eight times parentheses one point oh eight with an exponent of tenth power minus one, close the parentheses, divided by a 0 0.08 without the one in front. Everyone remember that formula? It might have been a while, depending on what kind of practice tests you've done. If it helps, we can use the Jamboard, or not Jamboard, the calculator. So 3,000 times 1.08 times parentheses 1.08 exponent 10 minus 1 divided by 0 
and we get $46,936 and change. Everyone okay with part A? This is only part A of the first sister. Then she lets it sit for 30 years without doing anything to it. She's spending all her money now on vacations. Nothing new is coming in. So which of our formulas is that? That would be the simple interest formula. Not simple. Simple only has one payout. So probably, so probably a, annuity formula? Compound interest. The annuity compound interest. Lots of payments. Um, this is there's one amount. We're just watching it grow. So I'll go to the next page. Oh, I probably put too much there. Yeah. Grab that. I'm going to have to shuffle everything around. I forgot how these took more than one slot. And now she's putting it in. The amount that she's starting with is this 46,936. And she's multiplying it by one plus the rate, which is still 1.08. And how many years go by? 30. Is it okay that I skipped what I normally write in blue for all of the setup parts? Yeah, that's fine with me. I have it written down in other places. So I'm going to start a new line here. Do that times 1.08 exponent 30. And there we go. So she winds up with a nice retirement amount, $472,305.49. Don't trust the rounding on this. In real life, every month, her bank account would be rounded to the nearest cent. But the exponent isn't doing that. It's just multiplying 1.08 by itself 30 different times, not rounding in between each multiplication. So this will be inaccurate, but it's going to be about 472,305 bucks. We just can't predict the exact sense without making a long table. Okay, first sister, she did well. She got over her $400,000 goal. Next sister, uh, let me move Clara to the next slide. And move Clara onward. Okay, um, so Cindy does save at least 400,000 and she also only had to save for 10 years. By starting early, she benefited from this tremendous power of earning interest over a long time period. Clara did the other thing. In part A, she doesn't save anything. She spends all her money on vacation. On the other hand, for 30 years, she puts in money. 
instead of 10. So she puts in three times as much. So hopefully that means she does pretty good at the end. Which formula are we going to use when she's putting in the same amount year after year, 30 different times? Annual increasing annuity. Yeah, this one again. So, for part A, there was nothing. She doesn't save any money. Part B, it's this annual increase in annuity. Do you want me to use the blue thing of setting up what all the different stuff is? Or is it easy enough to plug in? You've done this a few times. It's, it's fine if you want to leave the blue off for me. Okay. The numbers we've seen before anyway, because we're doing pretty much the same thing. The one plus rate is a 1.08. All three sisters had the same rate. Remember, you need your parentheses. She's putting in money 30 years, 30 years. And remember it's 0.08 at the end without a one in front. So we have 3,000 times 1.08 times, starting up parentheses, 1.08 exponent 30 minus one, and then divided by the point. So if you are like most people, you are now a little bit flabbergasted that the second sister, again, had to put money in for 30 years, not just 10 years. And she wound up with less, quite a bit less. She didn't make that $400,000 goal that we will eventually talk about. So the moral of the story so far is that starting early helps. The fact that the first sister could take advantage of compound interest and let her initial savings grow for so long was more important than the fact that the second sister saved three times as many years, 30 years instead of 10 years. So this is why hopefully people, if you are young, have already been bugging you, save money for retirement, even if it's just a little bit with each paycheck, it will make a big deal. Okay, Clara saves, almost saves that 400,000 goal, but fails, even though she put a lot in. She didn't start early enough, so she missed out on some of the power of compound interest. Okay, Chloe does the middle one. She always does 1,500 all 40 years. So same formula as before repeated there's no part a versus part b for her Her amount is smaller. She's saving half as much because she's going on vacations with the other half. She does get the same 1.08, the same 8% rate. And she does this 40 times. So her year number is 40. So how does she do? OK, 
Okay, how surprised are you that she came out in between the other two? I'm not too surprised because the first sister started saving at a, excuse me, at a younger age that had more money. And then the, um, the second sister saved at, an, at a later age with the same amount of money. And so if it's smarter to start saving and investing when you're younger, um, it makes sense to me that even though she had a smaller amount, she still came out um, better than the second sister. Okay, well said, thank you. Okay, so going here, so Chloe does save at least the 400,000 bowl. Um, those. Okay. She did start early enough to benefit from the power of compound interest. And in real life, again, most households are a, pick, a mix that they don't have enough in the early years to save as much as they might want in theory, but they start saving something and then they save more when they get older. So a common reaction right now is to think, well, who happens to have $3,000 a year to just put in retiring, retirement? So let's look at Cliff. Cliff is their brother. He stopped smoking at age 25 and decides to devote the money he used to spend on cigarettes to retirement. So he used to smoke a pack a day at 570 a pack. I called a bunch of stores back when I wrote this problem and that was a realistic number there. It's not anymore, but we're gonna use that number. So how much does he spend on cigarettes per year? Don't make this one harder than it is. 570 times 365. Yeah. Which is 2080 and 50 cents. Thank you. Okay. And then if he instead puts that into the retirement account, and we'll give him more realistic numbers. 8% is a little high. So we'll only give him 6%. And since he quit at age 25, then he has 40 years before he retires at age 65. So same formula as before, repeated deposits. So it was 2080. and 50 cents. We're doing a 6% rate instead of the 8%. So these are all 1.06s. He has 40 years. Pretty good. His numbers aren't as big, which is largely because we didn't give him the nice 8% rate, which was ambitious. But he gets most of the retirement money he's aiming for simply by reallocating what he was spending on cigarettes. And if you are a typical LCC student, Maybe it's not cigarettes, maybe it's Dutch Brothers coffee or some other thing that you could trim from your budget a little bit and not realize that that might be like most of your retirement money if you can change that habit. Where did we get the $400,000 goal? The, the general rule is at age 65 to have saved $20 for each dollar that your retirement expenses will be more than your retirement income. 
hopefully you'll have some retirement income from social security and pensions and so on. So in other words, save 20 times how much your expenses are more than that. Your savings need to cover the 20 years until you're 84, $1 per year budgeted, right? And then after that, the interest earned during those 20 years is gonna cover beyond age 85. So you don't actually need to have everything hidden under your bed and not earning interest. By earning interest after retirement, it will cover beyond age 85. So a typical American, and this is where it gets personal because you are living in a specific place with a specific lifestyle and not an average, whatever that would be. But looking at the average, the typical American retirement expenses are greater than their retirement income by about 20,000 a year. So that's where we get the $400,000 number. We're taking this general guidance, which is not specific to Lane County. I mean, every place is a little different with standard of living. But we're saying you're going to need this much when you retire each year, multiply it by 20, so you last to age 84, and then let the interest carry you beyond that. So 400,000 is sort of the basic number that gets tossed around by retirement advisors before they know you and your household's actual details. And that's the end of the story that you can get almost there just by reallocating money sometimes. And if you start early, you'll have more than enough. Although good luck getting 8% and 3,000 a year when you're age 25. And if you start late, you can still do it. There, you know, she's pretty much close enough. And if you start early with less, you will still have more than enough. Questions about any of that? I'm going to stop the recording.